we were wrong about something. And I think we need to kind of go back and revisit it because I don't want people having the wrong impression on something. But also I'd like to acknowledge the fact that we're wrong about a lot of stuff, but we're not afraid to admit we're wrong as, you know, husbands. Like we know, we know what wrong feels like. You mean you don't put up the tree before Black Friday? No. <laughs> Do you, are, is your Christmas tree up already? No, it's not. Come oh, on. Oh God. I'm gonna show up to your house and you're just gonna have a cut out of the Grinch with one string of Christmas lights coming from your gutter and that's, I decorated for Christmas. We were incorrect about something that I think kind of got missed, but I don't like to be wrong about things. And we gave info that was accurate at the time, but is not actually accurate. So I wanna back up and talk about Matt Milano's injury and when oh, he returned. Oh yes, return. yes. Because we said three weeks and we talked about what a brilliant move it was to put him on when it was the bye week. And if you go in and look at Google, Google return from IR, Almost everything you find from before the season says three weeks. Yeah. Three weeks, three weeks, three weeks. Everything says However, three weeks. However, the fine print. Yes. But in practice, it's not three weeks. So I want to give an example and talk about why Matt Milano is not eligible to return until the San Francisco game. Yes. Not after the bye week. So we'll use Zach Ertz just as an example. Okay. Gotcha. Zach Ertz goes on the IR, I think on the 16th, right? Miss that's the he went on the IR the morning of their game. Guess what? That's not a week, right? Misses that game. Went on IR in the morning, misses the game in the evening, right? Yes. Misses one game. Great. Next game is the following week. Okay, it's two games in. Bye week. Comes back from the bye week. Nope, not eligible return. Hmm. Right? Even though technically he would have missed three work weeks, he wasn't eligible because of the bye week, right? The bye week doesn't count as a week of play. They have to miss three games. Now, the way it was written, everybody said three weeks. Every source you can find is three weeks. It is not three weeks. It's three games. You have to miss three games gotcha. uh, in order to be eligible. Now, mind you, what the NFL would do if a game got rescheduled because of corona you know, if something like that happened, yeah. I'm sure the league would be liquid on that return date. But if no games are being rescheduled, it is three games that you miss. So while we did say prior that it was three weeks, we thought it was a brilliant move because one of the weeks was going to be the bye week. Unfortunately, that's not how the rule would've, is in practice. Would have been a nice move. Would have been a great move. But right? you look at it, if you look at the Buffalo Bills schedule going forward and, and before, mm -hmm. if you needed to lose Milano, you think the stretch of two NFC games and an AFC West game, okay, that's the best stretch we have because right. you had division games within there. Right. And and not only that, but even if he's late a week, even if he comes back a week later, it's still another a NFC game because you got San Francisco, right? Exactly. So it's out of the four games that were going to happen. It's a three of them. So it is. Yeah. I mean, I those, believe so. Yeah. Those take at least four or five weeks anyway. Right, exactly. And so he may, be out, he may be out against San Francisco, too. Well, and he was banged up before the peck injury. So mm -hmm. he, he had something going on lower body. I don't remember exactly what it was, but he had something lower body going on prior to the peck injury. So th they kept him on life support as long as they could to get him to this stretch of games. Yes. Because if you're going to pause, you're going to pause in the NFC games. And I know we bang that drum a lot, and I just don't think we can overstate if you're going to lose football games, you lose them to the NFC. Yeah. Because they don't matter to your tiebreakers inside the division or in the conference. They, do, they don't. And, and, and the, the ultimate goal, as far as the playoff system is set up this year, is to get the number one seed because you get a bye. Yeah. There's right. a lot of teams that have failed mm -hmm. miserably after the bye. Oh, God. Like, yes. if they have their bye in the playoffs, they're all rusty, they're flat. They're, mm -hmm. you got teams that come in really hot and do this and that and the other yeah. thing. And, uh, and I understand that. So the Buffalo Bills... It's more about positioning for a home game. That's the biggest thing now. I mean, if, right. if you win the division, obviously you you get a home game. Right. Um, but I think it's more positioning in that respect where you want to take care of your AFC conference games because then once you make it past that first round home game, could you get another home game right. due to record in the conference? And I understand that. And this all ties back in. Milano has to be healthy 
for your defense to maintain any type of success. Even though teams were still running on him when he was there. And that's because Absolutely true. guards and Absolutely tackles true. are getting up to the second level on them. Him and him and Edmonds, which is probably why they're injured. Right. They are yeah. fast. It's a great point. Coverage. Man. That's what? a great point. Is um, that that penetration from the offensive line getting to the second level? Your front in the first five games was not doing their job. Mm. I would beg to differ now. I think that defensive front is playing a lot Better. cleaner football now than they yes. were the first five games. But you're absolutely right. The compound damage to Edmonds and Milano just it had to be just all. Yeah, had because be they're more they're more coverage athletic backers. They're not. The LeVon Kirkland that we used to see back in the 90s. Oh, yeah. Where, oh, you want to bring a guard on me? I'll throw yeah, okay. one on them. Yeah, sure. I will. Yeah, um, exactly. It's, there's no Takeo Spikes on this team. Like, Spikes didn't no, have a he neck. didn't care. He did not. No, he didn't have he a He still neck. doesn't. No. <laughs> That's the construct of this defense, though. It, it's, I don't want to bring up Belichick, but the mantra of do your job. You have to take care of this assignment. Yep. If you are the one tech... You need to eat. You're not trying to get the tackle. Right. You're trying to eat up the body of the guard in the center. If the center takes you by himself, right. the guard's free to come on Edmonds. Right. Game's over. Well, and, you know, Oliver, and I, and I know a lot of people are going to bag on Oliver because they're not seeing stacks, you know, sacks in the stat sheet, mm -hmm. which I anticipated him to be a pass rush defensive tackle. I did. That is mm -hmm. not what they are having him do right now. They do mm -hmm. not have him playing that role. And same with, you know, same with Quentin Jefferson. They do not have him play in that role. That is not what they're interested in. They want them in there sucking up bodies so that way, you know, uh, their linebackers can be more effective because they're only running two of them. They're yes. only playing two linebackers. Let's, that, that's it. Like, it's, injury has forced them to play two linebackers, whether they want to or not. Injury has forced them to play two linebackers, and one of them isn't that fast. <laughs> right? Clyde is not, he's, he's a is sticky the, dude. He's the elephant in the room. He's the he's a sticky dude in coverage, you know. Like he he gets pushed off his his zone. Yeah, I it's and, and the construct. Like I said, I was going back to the construct of the defense. You talk about when you have Klein and Milano in there, it throws a wrench in the blocking scheme, which also helps with the run game. Because if you have Klein and Milano in the game at the same time, it offers a much different look. Because you know, is Klein coming? We got to shift protections. Right. Okay, that's what Zoe gave you last year. Right. They didn't know. We shipped him protection over here. They would ship protection. He didn't go. Uh-oh. And then you got Oliver one-on-one -on, -one on the backside. Right. So what would happen is if you have if you have Milano in there as well as Klein, and then Klein comes, either one guy's going to free up or they're going to shift the protection and double the wrong guy. Right. That's what happened. And then and the, last year what happens is when you had Star in there always eating two bodies. Jefferson's not doing that. Butler's not doing that. No. It looked better in the Seattle game because that's what the line was trying to do. They were trying to shift back and forth. And uh, you, you saw Edmonds was unscathed in that game because they probably weren't running the ball. He had 11 tackles. Right. They weren't running the ball and they had 11 tackles. Like, hello. Well, I also think that, you know, this team has been getting creative with ways to generate pressure because – they were doing the typical McDermott thing of we're just going to bring the four guys on the front and we'll get there. And then you're six games deep and you're like, oh, we're not getting there. Like we, <laughs> okay, we've gone through some pretty bad football teams and we're still not getting there, right? So they got creative and we start seeing Trent Murphy drop and then bringing Klein instead. And we see them start doing, we see them push um, Addison and Hughes to the interior standing up and move their defensive tackles to the end. Right? They're doing creative things to generate pressure. That's what they're trying to do. But the downside is you can't bring more than five because you don't you just don't have the linebackers to be able to suck that up right now. No. You, you just don't. Like the, and your secondary has been a little banged up too. Exactly, right? So you really the I know the old adage is if you need to cover up your secondary, you bring pressure. Mm hmm Right? The problem is your linebacking group really can't hold up to you bringing a lot of pressure right now. No. Unless the linebacker is the one generating it. Right. Yeah. That's like You want to kick Edmonds to the outside and rush on the same side as Jerry Hughes four or five times a game. We have not seen that at all. Thanks. Not seen that at all. Not at all? I thought it was once. I saw it once. I, if it's once, then I didn't see it. But the, the fact is you're not seeing it frequently enough to call it a thing. Well, here's right? the thing. I think I think it has happened quite a bit, but it's not... It hasn't been it's successful. Just, it, just not been effective. It hasn't been effective. So, in that respect, 
Yeah, you can kick Edmonds to the outside and have him rush, where it takes him out of the play if they run the opposite way. But that's the, that's the problem is if you rush Edmonds, it takes him out of the play. It does. You know, and I mean, who's going to chase that guy down? I mean, at third and 18, you can do it. Sure. He's more effective standing in the middle of that defense. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree with that. But, yeah, I, I – Missing Milano has been a major trouble spot for them, right? Mm-hmm. Especially coming into a contract year, major trouble spot. When Milano comes back, what does this defense look like? Do they still run a, a lot of base nickel? Because, honestly, Dean Marlowe played great in that nickel linebacker role. I really like that look, right? I like it. I really like that look. But do we see that? Do we keep? Do we see Marlowe still in there? in that nickel linebacker role, or do we see them go three linebackers across the front? Because that's really, I think, what they wanted to do. They wanted to go Milano, Edmonds, Klein. I think that was their plan. Yeah. But they haven't gotten there. And so. they didn't have any contingency to that because no, they for did an injury. Not. However, the, the secondary, it seems like they do have contingency plans for secondary. For the depth that they have in the secondary, they do not have that in the linebacker. Right. So what do you see? Hoyer, Marlowe, um, you see Neal. Neal. You know what I mean? I, I Put Neal as CB2 and put Dane Jackson in the slot. You let me know if you could bring five with that. Bring five with it. Neal will punch number two wide out in the face. Trey will do beat Trey on the other side, which he struggled a little bit this year. I think his backs will like, yeah. bother him. But then you put Dane Jackson on the slot receiver, and then you bring five. Dane Jackson. Until I see that. It's another episode, man. Dane Jackson's got to be on the roster. Dane Jackson is ineligible to come back up. Ineligible. He's not eligible to come back up and play. You right, sure? <laughs> no, that's that's a whole other episode, Mark. Hey, like, Jackson, another episode. What do you guys think? Oh, I know how you hate it. I know how you hate cliffhangers. Here it comes. <laughs>